I value lyrical melody. I value rich harmonies. I do occasionally venture into dissonance and even into atonality, but only to, to achieve certain specific effects. I write largely to please myself and, my, and to satisfy my own ears, but I live and work in an idiom, in a, in, a, in a universe that is largely traditional. That's the Capital District's Alfred Fedak, a composer of international prominence, describing his approach to composing, about which we are soon to hear more from our distinguished guest on this week's edition of Music from Waller Hall, here on WBTN AM 1370, your live and local, community-supported, nonprofit radio station. Today's show also includes a performance of Lyric Suite, one of Mr. Fedak's principal organ works, recorded only several weeks ago by another distinguished Capital District musical artist, Justin Foster, playing the magnificent 132-rank four-manual organ of Scotia's first Reformed church. Given the fundamental musical thrust of our Music from Waller Hall weekly series, we'll serve up the music as a first course. Alfred Fiedak's Lyric Suite opens with a movement entitled Prelude, followed directly by the second movement, Dialogue and Trumpet Tune.
Not long after organist Justin Foster recorded Alfred Fedak's lyric suite, it was my privilege and joy to sit down with the composer at Albany's Westminster Presbyterian Church, where Mr. Fedak has now directed its music for a quarter century. Among our initial topics was how the lyric suite came into being. Well, the lyric suite was actually uh, commissioned by the Eastern New York chapter of the American Guild of Organists to be performed during the 2003 Region 2 Convention, which was held here in Albany. That was the year that uh, David Hill was coming to perform at Westminster Church, where I happened to be the organist, and the plan was for him to premiere this work at my church on the newly reinstalled uh, Skinner organ. So that was the uh, genesis of the piece, and I tailored the work specifically for him and for the instrument. Interestingly, I wrote it for the instrument, and um, I, I believe I finished it around um, October, maybe even September of 2002. The organ didn't come into the church until about, well, it was dedicated in June of 2003. So I wrote it for an organ I did not yet have. I had, I had some familiarity with Skinner organs of this vintage and this size. What I actually did was composed it at the console of a two-manual Rogers. <laughs> One of the things that strikes me about the lyric suite is its original melodic content. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of my music is, in fact, based on, on hymnody, hymn tunes. And, of course, I write a lot of hymn tunes. I've published probably 125 of them. But this is a little bit unusual for me to have a, a piece that is a free composition, in, in essence. And in a sense, that it's, it's a little more difficult to do that because you have to invent everything from the ground up. When you start with a, a hymn tune and, and want to write, say, a chorale prelude on a hymn, the basic building blocks, the materials that you work with, are all presented to you in the hymn tune. And you can extract what you want from it and go to town. Uh, this was a little different, and um, in some ways it's more challenging, but it's, in other ways it's perhaps a little bit more creative. And you mentioned a cyclical element. Mm -hmm. So there is a uh, melodic cell that's introduced in the prelude that appears in different form throughout the several movements? Well, not quite. Uh, each, each of the first three movements has a distinct framework, but themes, the, those essential themes from at least the first and second movements reappear in the final movement. The third movement is, it sort of stands alone. Following these messages, music from Waller Hall will return with a second half of Albany composer Alfred Fiedek's Lyric Suite, along with Mr. Fiedek's talking about his approach to composing. This is your host of Music from Waller Hall, Charles Oligar, welcoming you back to the second portion of this week's show, which is graced by the presence of the noted composer Alfred Fiedak, warmly celebrated among our neighboring capital district's highest profile musicians. Having encountered the first movements of Fiedak's lyric suite, we now turn to the concluding two movements of that substantial work, entitled Pastoral and Final, respectively. The large, fantastically resourceful organ on which Mr. Foster is performing is a recent installation comprising both pipes and cutting-edge digital electronics built by the Allen Company of Pennsylvania, a pioneering leader in this latest chapter of the venerable annals covering many centuries of organ building.
Composer Al Fedak discusses his approach to composing. I go through a very long process. I have to start thinking about a project very early on. I may not set notes to paper, but I let the subconscious process the material for a long time. And then I, I have to work at a keyboard, and I write out a, a rough sketch. This, incidentally, the rough sketch is something that could only possibly be deciphered by me. <laughs> no one else could look at, at the, the sketches and understand. And then um, I, I go from there to a draft copy, and then I go from the draft copy to a final copy, a fair copy. And I do this all by hand. I still do it w with uh, paper and pencil. I find that that's really, really important for me because to have to actually write, physically write each note gives me three opportunities to make a judgment about whether or not it belongs there. And I, I find that this is a really uh, an important part of the process. And working with choirs, of course, the, the most important thing you have to consider is the singability of the lines. The ranges involved and the intervals and and only then, secondarily, can you think about, well, the verticalities, uh, the, the harmonies. Usually, when I, when I work on a choral piece, I sketch out the choral parts first, and then I have to figure out how I'm going to get to those sections. <laughs> but I also knew where the choir had to start, at what pitch level, and, and what the rhythms had to be, and the, the question then became how to set that up. What I came up with was, you know, the result of a lot of trial and error. It, it's actually... That's, that's all comp composition is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the way I do it. It's all trial and error. You learn as much by discarding things as, as you do by accepting them. Do you find, uh, after several years, that you have a desire to revise? No. Oh. No, I don't. I, uh, because I, I've gone through such a thorough process of arriving at, at a certain point with each piece, and I kind of like to close the door on it. I don't like to revisit old <laughs> stuff. And fortunately, I've, I've not felt the need to particularly. Every, every piece I have written, I think, is a valid and sort of accurate portrait of where I am at that particular moment in time. And uh, because of that, I'm perfectly happy to, to accept it. I will say that there are some pieces I like more than others that I've written, but uh, I don't think there's, I, I can't think of a single instance of something I wish I could rewrite, take back. With many, many thanks to our two guests on today's show, Alfred Fedak, a Capital District-based composer of established international renown, and Justin Foster, a Capital District-based organist of rising renown, we bring this week's Music from Waller Hall to a close with thanks as well to you, our listeners, cordially inviting you to tune in next week at this time as we once again welcome violinist Philip Fichor and pianist Constantine Feinhaus performing as American Double, bringing with them music of Maurice Ravel and William Bolcom from the opening and closing years, respectively, of the 20th century. As I bid you adieu, I am very pleased to remind you that you are listening to WBTN AM 1370, your live and local community-supported nonprofit radio station broadcasting from Bennington, Vermont.